Hi, I'm Professor Hila Lifshitsasa from NYU Stern School of Business, and I research new ways of organizing for innovation. Think about the open source revolution. A decade ago, if you would tell someone that thousands of distributed individuals that do not know each other or work for the same organization would voluntarily come together and create software that is as good or even better than the leading incumbent organizations, they would think you're crazy. Today, this is a reality. Can we imagine this open source revolution moving beyond software to science and technology? What happens if we try this open source approach on traditional R&D processes? This was the puzzle that drove me to spend almost three years at NASA, at Houston Space Center with the Life Science and Human Health and Performance Directorates. NASA was conducting a serious experiment with such open source approach. Their experiment was bold. For one year, they decided to open their most strategic R&D challenges, hard scientific and technological problems to the world through open online innovation platform and communities, namely Innocentive, Tope Quarter, and Yet to Come. At the same time, they were working in-house with collaborators and contractors with the best practices they have to solve these challenges. It did not take a year. Only three months have passed by and almost 3,000 individuals from all over the world, 80 countries, tried solving these problems. And three out of those hard 14 problems were solved. In particular, one solution became known as the home run solution for the open innovation experiment. This was a solution to a well-known heliophysics problem, predicting solar flares, what we call solar storms, these massive radiation eruptions that are very dangerous for anything in space and for us here as well. A semi-retired radio engineer from rural New Hampshire, Bruce Cragen, was able to bring a completely different approach from radio engineering, very different from heliophysics, and solve this hard prediction problem. In brief, I will share with you that on one end, there were R&D professionals who felt this was a slap in their face. They worked extremely hard for years to come to NASA to innovate. They are the problem solvers. Houston, we have a problem, they will solve it. On the other end, there were R&D professionals who said, yes, you're right that this goes against many things, but it works. At the end of the day, it's about the bigger agenda. We want to get to Mars. Let's refocus on that bigger why we do our work. We can change the how. In one of these arguments, a leading scientist stood up and said, a solution may come from your lab, from your collaborator, from an open innovation platform. You should not care. You are the solution seeker. Shifting from being a problem solver to a solution seeker was not an easy shift, since only those scientists and engineers who went through this transformation truly adopted open innovation and the solutions coming out of it. This ability to go through a shift in one's professional role and one's identity when challenged by a new technology, to be able to zoom out of the existing how we do our work, to pause, reflect, and refocus on that bigger why, and then accordingly change their work and who we are as professional, is crucial. Especially these days, as artificial intelligence and other technologies are challenging what we thought of as professionals' work. If you want to learn more about it or have any ideas to share or questions to ask, I would love to hear. My email is h at nyu.edu. Thank you.